<coughs> okay, hello everyone. We are very happy to see you here today. And thank you all for uh, in coming today. And thank you all for voting our presentation. The cyber agent has many other technology services in Japan. And we are using OpenStack as IT infrastructure for these services. Today, in this presentation, we will talk about how we are managing OpenStack as accelerating an ad tech service with OpenStack Cloud. And we came from Tokyo and we arrived in Vancouver after 10 hour flight. And Vancouver is very comfortable and it's a nice city. Okay, let me announce today's agenda here. First, I will introduce about cyber agent. I think that uh, many of you uh, much uh, don't do not much know about cyber agent. Next, I will talk about what is required for infrastructure of other technologies. Next, I will talk about why we choose OpenStack. Next, I will talk about OpenStack in cyber agent. And next, I will talk about big picture of our private OpenStack cloud. Next, uh, I will talk about how we are deploying and operating monitoring OpenStack. Finally, we, uh, I will talk about future of our private OpenStack cloud. Okay. Oh, sorry. And uh, I have one thing that I must apologize. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm so sorry. Um, probably you thought, who the hell I am? No worries, I'm not a dangerous person. Okay, let me share, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Makoto Hasegawa. I'm a cloud architect and leading the system admin team of cyber agent uh, Adotech business division. I have been managing OpenStack for one year. And uh, other than OpenStack, I also use uh, cloud platforms such as AWS and GCP. Recently, I'm most interested in how I can automate the cloud management by using various different tools. And there is uh, another speaker here. His name is Ryo. Hi, um, my name is Ryo Tagami. Um, I also work with Makoto. Uh, I'm an infrastructure engineer. And uh, I'm basically the deployer of the OpenStack and cyber agents. So uh, what I do is basically wiring racking, uh, installing an OS, and deploying OpenStack on top of it. Um, I'm kind of neat freak around wiring, so hence the uh, neat wiring. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Okay, <coughs> let's talk about cyber agent. Uh, may I help you a question? Do you know cyber agent? Uh, please raise your hand if you know cyber agent. Okay, okay. Uh, only Japanese people. <laughs> okay, now everyone here know us. Don't worry. It's okay. The cyber agent has one vision that is to create the 21st century's leading company. Cyber agent is expanding its business in the uh, field of internet reading industry of 21st century. 
We provide a variety of services such as online games, online communities, and other technologies. Let me give some examples for each services. About games, Rage of Bahamut, Girlfriend Preliminary. And about communities, Pashat My Pet, Ameba Blog. And we, and we have been running our Adex services on our OpenStack Cloud. Okay, let me start talking. What is other technology in Cyber Agent? This diagram shows the basic structure of our technology, explaining the services, how the services are delivered from advertiser to customers. And as you can see, our technology is composed of many different platforms, such as DSP, DMP, and SSP depending on each other. If I start explaining the detail of these components, it could take until tomorrow morning. So um, please look at um, our website for more information about these components. OK. Um, this is a cyber agent Altec business uh, diagrams. Each component is provided by different players, separate companies, like this. For example, cyber agent affiliate companies, and Dynaris and Smargo, provide uh, DSP and uh, Amado provide our networks and right segment provides the services in the MP sections. This diagram does not show all related companies and players and there are many more. Also new platforms and te technologies are added day by day. Okay. Uh, let me start talking what is required for infrastructure of other technologies. The infrastructure of other tech has to be flexible, agile, and stable. It has to be flexible because there are many platforms for services exist and the infrastructure under them have to work with all of them. It has to be agile because the infrastructure has to be prepared quickly and deleted when they are not necessary anymore. It has to be stable because one small trouble and system down has huge impact. So robust and redundant network topology, which has no single point of failure, is mandatory. So, uh, sorry. Oh. 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 Sorry. Let me share why we choose OpenStack. I think there are three reasons why. The first reason is there was a strong momentum that the OpenStack should be the next mainstream of crowd management system when we are evaluating several options. The second reason is OpenStack is open source. The cyber agent has strong culture of leveraging open source technologies. Using open source benefits us in terms of catching up new technologies and also cutting costs. The third reason, the third, oh, sorry, sorry. 
The third reason is I thought the technical skills and motivation of our engineers will improve by learning, deploying, and operating OpenStack, which contains a lot of different technologies. OK. Uh, OK. Let me start talking the history of OpenStack usage in cyber agent. And uh, in April 2013, we provided over 10 services uh, on OpenStack Grizzly. This, uh, this deployment is small. We had over 10 compute nodes, and we had 10 engineers. In October 2030, our tech division started in cyber agent, and our team was built up. And in June 2014, we provided some other technology services on OpenStack Icehouse with over 40 compute nodes. And my team is three engineers. After this timing, um, other technology services start growing pretty fast. So we needed to scale an OpenStack. We created a new OpenStack with OpenStack Juno. And a uh, hundred over compute nodes. And my team is still three engineers. Last month, OpenStack Q was released. We have, we have not testing yet. But it will be soon. I will test OpenStack Q. OK, let's deep dive into OpenStack environment. I'm handing it over to Ryo. OK, um, let's talk about the big picture of a private cloud. But before we get into that, um, uh, we decided one thing that's, uh, oops, we don't go into uh, upgrade our uh, OpenStack deployment. Rather, uh, we're going to just make a new deployment and uh, abandon the old one. And the reason because uh, I think we don't still have the safest way to upgrade an existing OpenStack without uh, data plane outage. So uh, oops. That's the reason why we have so many OpenStack environments. We still, uh, we already have five in the works, and at least two more is going to be uh, implemented. And I think it will grow. Um, let me talk to you about the biggest deployments in our uh, private cloud, which is uh, we call it Diana. Uh, no particular reason, but. You have to have some kind of naming to uh, say which cloud are you talking. OK, um, we have 200 nodes and counting, uh, results in 5,000 cores. And running on it is 1,000 instances. I think, I think it's more than that right now. Um, networking side. We have two 10G networking going up to the top of the rack switch. And each top of the rack switch has 40 gigs to the end of the row switch. Um, what are we using? We, of course, we use Keystone and Glass Nova Neutron. That's a basic requirement for 
the VM side of the OpenStack. But uh, we wanted to do more, so we used Swift Proxy and Cinder so that uh, block storage and object storage can be uh, provided to the users. And also, uh, we implemented Heat and Cellometer uh, because for the convenience of the user and also uh, we have to have some kind of chargeback to the users. And we use Ceph backing the Glance and Swift and Cinder uh, so that uh, we don't have to manage multiple storage services. Okay, redundancy. Uh, of course, redundancy is important because we are providing a production service on it. And I think we did whatever we can to achieve the highest redundancy. Um, in the hardware side, uh, we use SSD, but we still uh, stripe it the data, so uh, SSD failure won't bring down the compute node. Actually, we had SSD failure on the compute node, so I think this was a good decision. And also, we have a redundant power supply and redundant network connection. Uh, this is not particularly important in the side of redundancy, but I think it help us in the operation side when we just want to disconnect something for uh, temporarily. And also software side, uh, every API in the control plane is uh, load balanced. And also we use MariaDB Gala cluster and RabbitMQ uh, HA cluster. Um, I think the best way to achieve a uh, high available database is MariaDB Gala cluster but maybe you can use different things. And RabbitMQ is, I think, the standard OpenStack uh, message bus, so I think that's a standard. OK, um, what we do for deployment? We use Ansible as a deployment tool. And actually, we wrote every single role in playbooks for the deployment. Um, I didn't want to publish this in GitHub, but it's still in the works in terms of a really uh, lack of, uh, how do I say? It can be used otherwise, uh, where uh, outside of our environment. So I think I, I have to work on that. But someday, I think we're going to publish this. Um, operation, not, we don't have any uh, big operation, but one thing, we're sending all the logs to central log server uh, and just using grep to search it. I think, actually, I think uh, the other side of the room has a very interesting topic on that, but uh, Elasticsearch, uh, log session, Kibana session was uh, this afternoon, and I think people has a uh, pretty big interest in uh, things like that. So I think we're going to uh, look into that. And monitoring. Um, of course, we have to monitor the OpenStack components. So we are monitoring uh, if the process exists and TCP port is open. Also, uh, we do uh, API calls to actually uh, confirm that it's working and how much time it took to complete the operation. For example, uh, we uh, create an S3 bucket, uh, place a file on it, and delete it, and delete the bucket. And we measure the time for that and if it succeeds. Also, uh, standard monitoring is in operation. Uh, usual things like uh, PSUs is not failing or fan is actually uh, rotating. And of course, uh, how much file system we have 
on it, or how much memory we have available on the each compute nodes. Um, this is done by Zabex, and I hope this also will be uh, published on GitHub. Uh, actually, publishing Git, uh, Zabex templates and scripts is pretty difficult uh, due to Zabex limitations. So um, I have think we have to uh, figure out a way to uh, release this as a reusable uh, thing. We have some compromises. Um, deploying OpenStack doesn't mean you have a working full stack environment. For example, um, we chose not to use Neutron's native uh, LBAS capability because we already have a hardware load balancer and we want to use that. So uh, we created a tool to manage the existing load balancer, uh, but with some kind of uh, multi-tenancy. And also, um, people migrating from AWS uh, required us to have some kind of tagging facility to the Nova uh, API. And I think there is a blueprint on this, but don't think it's implemented yet. So uh, we use the uh, metadata field on Nova's database to create a tag field. OK, uh, so where do we go from here? Uh, first of all, we did the compute implementation of OpenStack, but I think we don't really got to the point where networking is virtualized. So I think virtualized network, other ways, uh, SDN, might be the first thing to do. Uh, the reason behind it is because we want to get rid of the VLANs because managing a VLAN is very hard. And it's not, there isn't a very good way to debug the problems uh, regarding VLANs. So we are looking into MiddleNet. And I hope in the new future, uh, we're going to implement the MiddleNet on the production. Also, uh, if you virtualize the network, you're going to virtualize the so uh, storage. So we're already using Ceph, but I think it next step is going to be uh, deploying every instance on Ceph cluster. That is uh, Ceph and Cinder based. Uh, Cinder is going to be the root volume for every instances. And of course, 40 gig networking, that's interesting. Um, not particularly required for uh, compute nodes, but in some cases, uh, like Redis, uh, they really need a high bandwidth. So uh, 40 gig is interesting. And ironic, that's a good component to look into. People really don't want to use virtual machine or don't uh, want to use virtual machines. So ironic is, I think, a good thing to do. And also, um, Kilo and Liberty, uh, this has to be done. Uh, new is always better, so I think we're going to do that. Uh, any questions, if you may? No? OK. Um, just so you know, this presentation is on GitHub, so you can go uh, to the GitHub to view this material. And also, we are accepting questions and comments on this presentation uh, on issues on GitHub. So if you have any further questions, you can ask on GitHub. Anything? OK, okay thank you, you very much. Thank you.
Uh, see you all guys in Tokyo.